From the origins of a brutal blood sport to squaring off against dangerous wild animals, here are 11 truths about Roman gladiators. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You. Hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 11. Origin of the Gladiator The origins of gladiator combat can be traced back to the 3rd century BC, and it was initially part of funerals for the wealthy. When Brutus Pera died in 264 BC, his son had three pairs of gladiators fight to death in Rome's cattle market. This was a munus, a commemorative duty owed by the descendant to the soul of a dead ancestor. It was also believed that blood purified the souls of the dead, so the fights might have been a substitute for human sacrifice. Gladiatorial Munera grew in popularity and before long gladiators were a part of state games, known as ludi, held during religious festivals. Before we move on, official They Will Kill You merchandise is now available at theywillkillyou.com. It's out of this world. Number 10. Gladiator Oath Uri Venciri Veberari Feroke Nekari, which roughly translates as I will endure to be burned, to be bound, to be beaten, and to be killed by the sword, was the gladiator's oath. Once a man uttered these words, he entered the ranks of Rome's deadly showman. He would endure harsh training, living inside guarded barracks, and the possibility of being severely wounded or even killed in the arena. Nevertheless, it was also an opportunity for people of all classes to make a name for themselves. Before we move on, answer this question. Where does the term gladiator originate from? A, a sword. B, a location. C, an armor piece. D, a religious ritual. Let us know what you think in the comments section below and stay tuned to find out the right answer. Number nine, political tool. Gladiator combat eventually became an integral part of life in ancient Rome. The line between Munis, the funeral duty it began as, and Ludi games for public entertainment virtually vanished. Trainers and school owners would make small fortunes while politicians would use the games to earn the favor of Roman society. Such was the case of Julius Caesar, who held games as a Munis for his father, even though he died about two decades earlier. He used 320 gladiator peers who donned silvered armor and offered the crowd an unprecedented spectacle. After the Roman Civil War, Emperor Augustus capped how much one could spend on a munis and assumed imperial authority over gladiator games. From that point on, the grandest and most celebrated games would be state-sponsored and associated with the emperor, thus furthering his public recognition, approval, and respect. Number eight, free men and the condemned. The common misconception is that all of the gladiators were slaves or convicted criminals. By some estimates, almost a fifth of those taking part in the games were free men who had voluntarily embraced a gladiator's life. They would sign contracts with gladiator schools fueled by hopes of fame and fortune. These free men included former soldiers who still craved the thrill of battle, people who'd lost their inheritance, non-citizens, desperate men, but also those in upper classes, such as noblemen and senators, eager to prove their warrior prowess. The bulk of the gladiatorial ranks did indeed consist of those damnatio ad ladum, meaning they were condemned to fight. Those deemed most undesirable by Roman society were called nosi, and for them being sent to the arena was more of a death sentence than professional combat. Number seven, fight to the death. It's believed that professional gladiators were often trained to wound rather than to kill. They were expensive to house, feed, and train, so their lanta, or school owners, weren't exactly eager to see them needlessly killed. Those who fought in single combat were often of similar size and experience. If they put on an entertaining show for the crowd, it wasn't uncommon for both of them to be allowed to leave the arena. The arena spectators weren't exclusively there out of bloodlust and, in fact, preferred to watch highly skilled warriors competing against each other rather than a slaughter. That being said, the life of a gladiator was typically short. Most didn't make past their mid-twenties or past ten bouts in the arena. Number six, 
theatrical flair. While the combat was very real and violent for those fighting in the arena, the brutality was masked by a theatrical flair meant to entertain crowds. This meant reenacting famous battles or feats of glory from Rome's history. For example, the Hoplomachus was a gladiator made to resemble the Greek hoplite and was often pitted against the Mormillo, who was armed like a Roman soldier. This was evocative of Rome's battles in Greece. The earliest gladiatorial types were inspired by Rome's enemies at the time and included the Thracian, Samnite, and Gaul. The Samnite, later renamed to Secuta, was elegantly helmeted, heavily armed, and probably the most popular type. There was also a choreographic element to combat, which favored gladiators prolonging the bout for the crowd's entertainment rather than swift kills. The lavish spectacles grew to include chariot battles, exotic animal hunts and more complex fights involving a larger number of participants. Number 5. Training Even though their lives were full of hardship, gladiators were often well taken care of, particularly since they were regarded as an investment. They were regularly tended to by physicians and their high-energy diet mostly consisted of dried fruit, boiled beans, barley and oatmeal. In a way that mirrors our contemporary treatment of professional athletes, those expected to emerge victorious received more attention from the staff at the gladiatorial school. Training was performed with wooden or blunted weapons, and it was severe, as Roman gladiators were expected to be at the peak of physical fitness. Fighting styles were most likely learned through the constant practice of choreographed routines until a novice rose through the ranks to become an experienced fighter. Number 4. Learning How to Die Gladiators were expected to exhibit complete bravery, even in the face of certain death, and to never cry out or ask for mercy. This would count as a good death and redeem them from the dishonor of having lost the bout. It also provided a noble example of Roman virtue for those in attendance. With their dignity intact, they would be carried off to the arena morgue with their bodies dedicated to Libertina, the Roman goddess of burial and funerals. Learning how to die with honor was actually a part of gladiator training. If a wounded gladiator was brave, unflinching, and defiant, as if he welcomed his opponent's blade, it increased his chances of being shown mercy by the crowd. Those who didn't retain their honor were killed by being stabbed through the neck or between the shoulder blades, and their bodies were humiliated. They were dragged out of the arena, and their corpses would sometimes be struck with mallets or pocked with heated irons. Number 3. Paradox of Status it's a paradox that gladiators, who were amongst the lowest social classes, were so celebrated and revered in Roman society. Children had clay action figures of their favorite gladiators, and their feats were the constant subject of discussion in circles ranging from inns to palaces. Some rose to such fame that their names appeared on city walls and other public places. Gladiators were also well known for making women swoon, and their blood and sweat were often sold as elixirs to wealthy women. So where does the term gladiator come from? If you chose A, a sword, then you're right. The Latin word for the bladed weapon is gladius, which means that gladiator can be translated as swordsman. Gladius also refers to the traditional short double-edged sword once wielded by the Roman foot soldier. Number 2. Thumb Verdict the fate of a defeated gladiator was ultimately left to the spectators who chanted for either mercy or death. That being said, the famous thumb-down verdict most likely had a different meaning in ancient Rome than condemning the gladiator to death. It's still uncertain what that meaning was, but according to some historians, the thumbs up might have actually meant killing the gladiator while a closed fist with a wraparound thumb could have meant sparing him. The thumb-down might have been the equivalent of putting down the sword, meaning that the crowd wanted the gladiator to live. Number 1. Bestiari There's a distinction that's typically made between bestiari and gladiators. The latter category pitted humans equipped with various weapons and armor against each other. Bestiari, on the other hand, squared off against wild animals such as lions, leopards, tigers, bears, elephants, boars, wolves, and other exotic beasts. These creatures were usually brought to the arena from far away territories under Roman rule. There was a type of torturous capital punishment called damnatio ad bestias, which translates as condemned to beasts. 
It was reserved for the worst criminals in Roman society, who were stripped naked and forced to fend for themselves against wild animals. Cicero wrote about one instance in which a single lion savaged over 200 bestiari. Then there was the type of bestiari who were equipped and specifically trained as a beast fighter. They were taught animal behavior and various techniques on how to bring them down. It was a dangerous trade and according to Seneca, a proving ground for young men who wanted to master their arms. Sometimes the beast fighters would be assisted by venators, those who made a career out of hunting wild animals in the arena. Carpophorus was Rome's most famous bestiarius. He was so strong that he killed a rhino with a spear and in a single battle, a lion, a bear, and a leopard. He even fought during the opening of the Flavian Amphitheater, now known as the Colosseum. Thanks for watching. If you were to fight in the arena with only a shield and a sword, would you rather face a heavily armored human opponent or a fully grown African lion? Let us know in the comment section below.